Hello, uh, this is the, the third episode of the Job Master's Diary. Uh, today we're going to show how you put a plough harness, plough harness or plough gears uh, onto a single horse. Um, more often than not in farm work it was a pair of horses that were wearing plough harness, uh, but there were jobs that you used with, uh, with a single horse, scuffling, horse hose, etc, that sort of thing. Uh, so this is what the, this harness would be would be used for. The horse is uh, is going to sleep. Horse is uh, Casey. Uh, Casey's the uh, the old boy of the of the stable. Well, no, I'm the old boy of the stable actually. Um, him and I are growing old together. Well, I hope we are. He's been the mainstay of the of the business for quite a number of years. Most of his work is over at the Ironbridge Gorge Museum. Shropshire, uh, and he's the horse we use for our Shire Horse Experience days. Uh, all the details of those things, if you fancy having a look, are on our uh, website, which we'll show at the end of the, which will show the details at the end of the video. Uh, he's there ready for the job. Uh, we start off with the same as we did with the cart harness, uh, in the respect of the collar. So the collar. Get his his head down, that helps. Head down. Once you get it there, which is the narrowest point, turn it over, rests onto his, uh, onto his shoulders. That's in the right place now, that's the collar. And this is the, the plough gears, so we put this over his back, the pad goes over his back and a chain either side. So, you can get this right, put it over there. Cropper that goes underneath his tail. If we can get that there. Just make sure that you've got no hair trapped. Because that will rub against him. So that's proper. And then the strap. And two straps to the collar. One on either side. Same on this side. And you need to be able to get your hand underneath there. You don't want it so tight that it's rubbing all the every time it moves. But you don't want it so, too loose that that cropper is hanging down halfway down his dock. So, roughly a hand between there, and that's okay. Pad itself with the chain. Once it, I've left the link there, that will become obvious in a minute. Uh, so the chain, and exactly the, again, exactly the same on. On the other side, so just to explain the different pieces of the, of the harness, a long chain from the hame hook, which comes down the side of the horse, and that chain comes back and is attached to whatever you're pulling, be it a plough, horse hoe pad is literally just to hold the chain up in the air and the cropper, the back strap and the cropper with the chain carriers and again to keep the chains up in the air. You can manage just with a pad. I've seen even photographs many years ago of literally just the chain and straight back to the implement. The less harness you can put, the less leather you can put on a horse the better because the leather, where the leather is he will sweat. But this will this all helps when you're actually doing the work. The crupper itself under his tail and it fixes the collar. That stops the collar falling forward if he if he puts his head down.
and then the bridle and as I explained in the other episodes I use open bridles leave a head collar or a, oh, a rope halter on underneath the bridle when we're working them um, the head collar lies flatter so it's in some respects a little bit better than a rope halter the best halters are what they refer to as Yorkshire halters which are effectively a rope halter but it's a webbing it's, it's, it's a webbing and it lies flat similar to that uh, may, the best the, the main reason for putting those things on is if you've got to tie a horse up you're far better tying him up with a head collar or a halter never tie him up with the bridle you can tie him up with the bridle and he pulls away you'll pull the bridle ruin the bridle and probably spoil the horse's mouth as well because that bit's in his mouth so you should never tie them up just on the bridle so this, this rope halter or a head collar underneath the bridle when we're working so the bride goes on head down mate get him to put his head down right down put him out and then over his ears this is exactly the same as it is on a card set nose band underneath and a throat lash Just to keep everything in the right, in the right position. Just make sure that's tidy underneath there. And tie them up again. And then last, but not least, the reins or the lines, as they're referred to in, uh, in for agricultural work, and you and rope rather than leather. The, the cart harness we showed, we use leather reins. This time rope lines, and the rope lines, if you imagine ploughing all day, these are filthy dirty, they might be soaking wet, rope will dry, leather will dry and it will get to hard and crack, so for farm work, for agricultural work, traditionally it was rope, rope, and referred to as lines rather than reins. Now fixing it to the bridle, just put a, that's why I left the loose link, through the link there, and then onto the, come here, and then onto the bit. And there's fancy knots for doing this. I just do a half hitch and put that in there. And that's that. And then exactly the same on the other side. So through the link on the chain and to the bit. The reason I put the line through the loose link on the chain there is because for most farm work you're actually walking on the ground, you're walking from the ground and you want the straightest line you can get from the bit to where you're working. We sat on a dray, a cart, put it through the link on the collar there, but certainly when you're working from the ground that's a better system. So we just up those lines to the top of the hames and then we're ready to take him into the field. Right, well we've backed him into the, well it's a set of harrows these, they're only short, they're about five foot wide those harrows, and a single horse will pull those, but a, single horse ploughs were made, a uh, horse hoe or a horse scuffle, and that's what you'd use a single horse for in, 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 on, in that cultural work. So, what you have got to remember, I'm going to hook this, I'm going to hook this rope just over there, uh, and again, that'll st when he's working, that'll stop him putting his head down to feed. Often you'd find a, a hame rain or a bearing rain that goes went from one side of the bit round onto this hame and then back to there. And that again would stop him from putting his, his head down when he was working. 
what you've got to remember is, and in the ideal world, as I've said before, stand, stand, someone standing in front of him, particularly when you're hooking him up to something, because you don't want him moving off. But as I've kept stressing, the most important thing is that you teach your horse to do is to stand still. So once you've told him to stand, but always remember that he could walk away, so stand. So when you're actually hooking this up, just keep your reins, keep hold of your reins, so you will contact with his mouth in case he moves. So we've got a couple of hooks here, which you pull down. And this piece at the back, red. The red bar there, swingle tree, whipple tree, cobble tree. There's all sorts of different names for these things. In Shropshire, tor trees, uh, when I first came to Shropshire, that was the term they were using, tor trees. And I've not heard that anywhere else. But, uh, but uh, generally speaking, swingle tree is the name. And that's just a single one there for when you use it, single horse. Now I always put the hook uphill. And that's because when that's on the ground, if you catch a root, you'll, if you don't break the root, you'll jar the horse at the collar, um, spoil the plough, break the swingle tree. So uphill. I've seen people do it the other way, but that's the way I was shown and that's the way we use. The rope lines, and as I was explaining, if you put them through the ring there, by the time you walk back to the implement, your line from the rain, from the from the from the bit ring right the way along is a fairly level line which gives you a little bit more control a little bit more contact on the mouth and what you want to do you want to make sure this set of harrows these lines need to be long enough so that i can stand quite a well behind the arrow you generally speaking you're walking behind your work don't walk along the side walk behind your work one so you can see what you're doing stand stand keen to go what i am going to do now just to show this chain and this is very important i'll hook those back up there when he's actually in draft, we we'll just move him up a little bit. You want to make sure that, that is a straight line. What you don't want, and you find this on some of these old plow pads, they're too short. The horses weren't quite as big, so they're short. So instead of getting the line directly to the swingle tree, you'll get a line that goes from there to there, and then the, it's it's it, that's one of the worst things because instead of pulling on the collar pulling on the collar but you're also pulling down onto the back which is which is no good for his back so that's important you'll f i don't know whether you can see from there i've actually had to extend those so they're longer now anywhere but that's what you want to be looking out for when you when you're actually pulling come on that wants to be a straight line to what you're pulling and there's the harrows there just moving stand relax Okay, so when you're taking him out of whatever he's pulling, change the tires, you just need to back him. Back. Back there. Back. Get the chain loose. And again, important. Keep hold of your reins. If he moves forward now, especially when you're halfway through doing this, you can have an accident. So literally one. Two. He's free now. So they can be stored up there. Same on there. And then store the lines on the hay. And after a short day's work today, he's ready to go back to the stable. Uh, you'll have seen we've had the three young ones looking on, hopefully being educated as you've been, I hope. Um, there'll be one just about ready for working, just finished breaking, and the other two will be starting on very soon. So that's the end of the, uh, the third episode. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope it's, uh, I hope it's made some sense. Uh, it hasn't made much sense to me, but if it's made some sense, that's good. Um, and it's, I hope it's been of some use. Um, as I've said in the past, it's my way of doing things. It's not the only way. Um, and there's, there's many different ways of doing the same job. 
So this is the way that's worked for me for a long time. So that's the way I'm sort of explaining to you. Uh, we do in future videos, we'll obviously do some more. We'll, just, we'll put a pair of horses and show them how they're hooked up to the to the implement for, uh, for farm work. Thanks again for watching and uh, if it's been some use, watch some more. Thank you very much.